Well, hello everybody. I'm Gary. Nice to have you back. Um, from Lantana Removal Queensland, 0449 986 880. Uh, we operate out of Narang Bar in Queensland and we are the experts with 40 years of experience in eradicating Lantana. And when we eradicate Lantana, it stays gone. Okay, so we'll, we've had this situation where we've been dealing with the Brisbane City Council and asking questions after questions. And the answers just keep being um, what's named in gibberish. Okay, so they aren't meeting their obligations to uh, eradicate Lantana. They're not meeting their obligations to res to um, not release Lantana to the environment. They don't have any understanding of the reasons why they have to specifically assign specific values to um, specific infestations. Okay, they don't have any idea. When you ask them the questions, they keep referring back to going, oh no, we've got our own plans in place and we're not going to worry about that. What's going to happen in the very near future with all 70, 70 odd councils, 77 councils across Queensland, is we're going to put in freedom of information um, requests to get that information from them of exactly what they've um, invested in these things and exactly what areas and where those areas were. because. Until we actually put the state and federal government under that sort of acid, we are not going to have any action of any significance on any of these issues. You know, at $75 billion a problem, how did the state government come up with changing, secretly changing those things to be low risk? You know, they got a heap of organisations together and I've had close contacts with those organizations they're called not-for-profits which doesn't mean that the money doesn't get milked out of there in huge numbers we've had plenty of places where CEOs are actually government officials and um, some of the think tanks and lobbyists back to the government are actually government parliamentarians that there's such corruption going on within this system um, and such a big push to um, muddy the waters and stop anybody from ever knowing about these things so basically your councils now are operating on the procedure that they have written off huge areas of our state. They say they prefer to say, no, no, we actually are um, supporting other areas. Okay, but the other areas are much, are tiny little areas, right? So higher value areas, which aren't you and I, um, and those areas they protect. Everything else is written off. So what that means to you and I is that they will not spend any money, and this came directly from the Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy. If you have lantana sitting on your fence line, okay, and because that lantana is on government land outside of your property, and it crosses your boundary and it infests your property, because they can see lantana on your property, they won't come and do anything about it. Why should they? There's a waste of time. You've already got lantana there. There's no point in us protecting that. So you see how this works? So the bigger the infestations across our um, shire in specific properties being infested with this, then our government walks away going, well, we're not going to spend any money here because it's already there. They put it there. Where's the morality of that? Your councillors in the council have been failing you forever. I've stood up Moreton Bay Regional Councillors um, for uh, Narangba, for Mount Me for Sanford, and I'm not hearing anything back. I'm not getting any response. I write to them and I publish this through to them, and I get a, a call, finally, finally, this is uh, 12 months after I've originally written to the mayor, I finally get a phone call back going, ah, uh, yeah, you've been a very naughty boy, and I'm really angry, and I'm gonna uh, write to you with a uh, formal response. It's taken all this time to get this. Because they were originally saying, oh no, we don't have to do any of this work. We're not doing any of this work. That was what was written down. We're not doing any of this work. Not at all. Not our problem. The government has said it's low risk. It's low risk. We don't need to worry about it. When you write off huge areas of our state, like has been written off by our uh, state government, our premier allowing this to happen, now, I went to them, her 12 months ago, and said, come out here, I need to show you all this stuff. I'll drive you around. I will drive you around here, you and the Prime Minister and the New South Wales Premier, and I'll show you what has changed ecologically so you understand why this is a horrific change to our ecology. 
I've never never had any uh, feedback from that, any comeback to go and do that. So the council say, well, if you've got Lantana on your property, we're not going to bother with it. Now, I can show you physically so many cases of where the water has transferred this material, which is how this material moves, uh, is the greatest spreader of this material. But the government never wanted you to know that because as soon as that comes into play, then all of the national parks have been infesting all of us for that many years. Straight down those water courses, which become the water courses in our, um, in our creeks, in our shire, straight off those creeks on our roadways. So the birds take the, uh, the material from the water courses and fly them out to the higher points. Okay, and they go and sit in those trees, do their business, and an infestation starts. And the infestations get bigger and bigger and bigger, and our councils have been ignoring that for 30 odd years. We have entire water courses at Rush Creek, uh, all through Mount Me, all through Sanford, Debra, all the way out through Dundas, where the whole of the water courses are just choked with this stuff. Okay, and when that stuff is on those creek banks, they do not do any erosion control at all, this material. It's a load of rubbish. It's one of the greatest lies that they have ever given you. The more roots you have in the ground, the stronger the hole. This is a shallow-rooted plant. The first thing to go when we get major floods down those things, all the lantana goes downstream and all of the seeds go downstream, spreading out over hundreds and even thousands of kilometres. From the tips of some of these ranges to the water course when it hits the sea, are thousands of kilometres winding and deviating through those things, spreading that cancer. And your government completely suppressed all of this from you. $75 billion problem. And they suppressed it from you. It became low risk under our uh, Palaszczuk government, under the New South Wales government. Councils changed laws and regulations to have A4 or E4 or whatever the hell it is in New South Wales, where you can't take any tracked machine into any forest, any land situation in those shires to cover up their negligence in allowing this material to spread. They created um, asset pro protection zones and those protection zones are very specifically targeted around certain tiny little assets while the rest of the state is completely, you're out of here guys, you're on your own. And the further it spreads into your lands, the further a hold it takes into your lands, the less those councils or government will do anything about those things. We never got to decide this, and this should have been a people's choice. Whether we turn our back on a $75 billion problem that's growing at 400 plants per plant or 3,600 plants per plant where it's in a strong water environment and your expert scientists, your government told you this was okay. Don't worry about it. It's all cool. This is one plant of 32 weeds and they're doing an equally good job of all of those other 32. You should be terrified by now for your children's sake and your children's safety because on top of that $75 billion for one weed, one problem, there are, they keep saying to you, you talk to Brisbane City Council, straight away they'll say, but there's far worse weeds out there. Like I should have confidence in you when this is what we have with this one weed. And you're telling me there's far worse weeds out there. And I should be excited that you are, it's in your hands. And you're telling me there is no um, operational um, thing in this material. We'll get back to you when some funds come available and we decide what we're going to do. But they're not going to tell us what to do. So go away you dirty little grub and don't bother us again. This is what you have had done to you and your children. And if you don't think this is serious, you wait till your property values start to reflect $75 billion problem. We have places being sold for half of their original value because of the, the infestations of Lantana, plus all the other weeds. We are so far behind this catastrophe and our government, our Prime Minister now, lies to us and ignores this. He's had, since he took office, and Turnbull before him completely ignored this for all of the 10 months or so, 9 months, that he had it on his plate, written to him almost weekly, fortnightly, monthly, all the time with this information, saying, we need to get after this, let's be friends and let's go get this material, 
and these guys have no plans. Either they are completely unable to comprehend those figures and that size of that problem, or their advisors through their scientific web are that uh, removed from reality. Because remember, a scientist only tells you what you pay him to tell you. He's not going to tell you, oh my God, we are in a world of hurt. Right? He's going to tell you, well, you know what? It's too big a problem. Let's give up on it. Let, oh, that's what we can do. We can call it naturalized. Naturalized means that they gave up on it. They said, we can't possibly eradicate it. Okay? This is the mentality that you um, are being punished with. Okay? We can't eradicate it. I can eradicate it. No problems at all. Been doing it for 40 years. Not an issue. If you can eradicate it on an acre, 10 acres, 1,000 acres, 100,000 acres, the principles don't change. You still eradicate it. We have to meet the growth rate of this material, okay? Because if we don't meet that growth rate, we're still going backwards and this material is still growing faster than our efforts. The minimum we should be doing, the minimum we should be demanding from our state and our federal government and our councils is that we meet the minimum um, growth rate. Because until we meet that, this is a catastrophe that is rolling like an avalanche down a, down a mountainside. And the worst terrain that these people allow this material to get into on these mountain ranges and ridges and the other ridges and tributaries off this, remember, each one of these watercourses can go for thousands of kilometres. I can prove something to you there on their booklet, okay? They turn around and say, you know what, we found that um, Lantana had moved about 3,000 odd kilometres, between two and 3,000 kilometres um, in one, one cycle. We didn't expect it to get to that place for 40 years, and yet it covered that distance, and the floods moved it. Now... You look at that book, you look at this book here, this is their manual. This is this has got fancy, fancy stuff. This is their manual, best practices manual. This is what we are all going to be bound by, by the um, state government with their new gift of $750,000 to their mates who got us to, who doubled it in 10 years and got us to 10 million um, hectares. Um, we're going to have a new one of these books written by the same people that got us to here. And we should be feeling warm and fuzzy about a $75 billion problem today. That's not the escalation rate of this material. That's just today. And they say that this, this stuff, um, there's nowhere in these books that does anything about water moving it. It's birds and animals, right? Birds and animals didn't double it. it would, we don't have enough birds to move that quantity of material in that manner. But once the birds moved it from these beautiful infestations that your council's allowed to grow here, that's your council lands, okay? And then your birds took it and put it up the tops of the hills, not halfway up, they took it up the tops of the hills. And that's what speeded the process up. The gravity then with the water pushing it, once we had a good rain, flushed that material down there. Where this material ends up under um, existing infestations, it lays dormant. The seeds don't hatch, okay? It's the ones that get blown out from those ones there and then hit new territory that then shoot and propagate. And then as the water comes down behind those guys, shoot and propagate. And they keep spreading out like fingers and tentacles. It's a very simple system. Why your scientists never ever worked out any of this material. I look at a surface and the actual area talks to me. I can physically see, right, cool, that's, yep, yeah, okay. And I can tell you where that material is gonna show up. I can tell you where we need to hit that material and I can also tell you where is the priority that we have to get that material out of there. But as usual, our government says, you know what, we've only got money to spend here because that's going to be $1,000, $1,500 an acre to deal with that material. This material is going to cost us $4,000, maybe even six or $10,000 an acre. But this material will, will fill in this gap no matter what you do forever. 
And every time you have a super, super um, flood, like super flash of water, not a flood, but a super flash of water, this material has seeds from um, six times a year being dropped at its base. It has an enormous storage of seeds to flush out over an enormous new area. These things show up on the sides of roads. Roads are the perfect environment for Lantana to hit mega mega expansion because they get so many different flushes from those um from those rains hitting the roads and coming straight off the roads it's a much higher wa water environment plus the water then flushes them further out and spreads them wider as they go through those systems it keeps them in flower to flower six ten times a year right remember 3600 plants from one plant is only from the um from the uh, six cycles a year. On the sides of roads, that can be 10 cycles. It can be far more because it's getting those one inch flushes of water regularly. These are facts. These aren't my opinions or um, my, you know, wanting to believe something else. When you go to Dundas and you look at those infestations I filmed there with the drone at the bottom of Mount Glorious, you see how that contamination goes through those things how the cancer consumes those environments and then once it consumes the environments the, its other mates show up with it the cat's claw the cockspur the uh, fire ants all of those other pests show up with that material and then completely decimate those environments the vine groups show up then the rubber vine and the other ones show up with them then and boom they're through the canopy then they pull the canopy over it collapses the canopy reaches down and then those plants hit hyper gear straight up it's just like throwing petrol on a fire and none of these people are saying to you this is a serious problem they don't want you to have access to this information because it changes their whole political stance you know i've been all over the morton bay regional shire all over their councillors and i'm the bad guy for bringing this information to you you have a look across Mount Me, uh, Mount Glorious, Sanford, you know, uh, Cedar Creek, um, Dabra, Petrie, Narangba, and you see these infestations in these watercourses. You see the size of these infestations, and they're pumping out at that 3,600 um, plants per plant. And I'm the bad guy for bringing the information to you. Now, these other people don't have any uh, morality within the mayor or the councillors you know instead of them coming to me and saying okay let's sit down let's have a proper talk let's come in sit down let's work out a, a works plan let's hire you as a consultant and go through what prioritize um, things that we need to work on to uh, work out the high value targets in these materials and that's where your state government has really failed you by putting out that low risk. And I don't doubt that the, the councils are right. Somewhere that low risk exists that they put it up there. But no, but the councils won't dob them in. And they're not putting their hands up. You know what the state government's like. They're not going to put their hand up and go, uh, yeah, we made a big mistake and we did that. Only that mathematics shows that. So, you know, this is what we're dealing with within this um, within this set of problems. And we've got to deal with it very seriously because this is our kids' future. A $75 billion problem is not a little problem. It's not a low-risk problem. Add to it the toxicity of the plant and the other animals that are dying because of it. Our natural wildlife is dying. Our birds don't eat these seeds and survive. These seeds have been proven to kill adults and children within our own country. So what, you suddenly think the birds are... Uh, what's the name for that? Yeah, they fly up the top of the hill and they poop it out and they expand the what's known, but they die. If it kills us, it's going to kill the bird. It's no way about that. It's killing our um, native fauna. There's no two ways about it. And it's something we need to deal with.